the space really determined what we made in here, I would say, as much as the work. So we've been visiting the building as it's being built in parallel, developing ideas at the same time. Because it's such a sort of big space, we just want to make sure everyone feels part of that matrix and that performance. It's about helping tell that narrative, it's about drawing the audiences in, but it's about evoking those atmospheres and the sensations that people feel. This is a giant industrial warehouse. The building itself began as this kind of phantom because we would come up to Manchester, we'd look around and it would be literally rising out of the sides of the riverbed. And it was a long time before we came up with what you see here. It's a very long, narrow space in a way, this warehouse. And rather than counter that, our instinct was to emphasize it with this long, you know, runway and block of screen. What you're seeing now, the screen is just hovering above the deck, but for a lot of the performance, it hovers just above the heads of the performers and it creates this pressure to hold them because it's a vast space. How do you hold the human in this space? The main challenge with this show is actually just the sheer scale of the screen. You can't get far away enough from the screen to be able to take it all in as one image. And also looking at the screen as a sculpture, as a way to light the white environment around. It pushes your technical expertise and it's a very iterative process. You, you sort of sketch, it, it's like sketching, but you're sketching with pixels. We obviously have beautiful, rich source material in all the Matrix movies. We're using it as inspiration for our ideas and our worlds. The scene where the agents are chasing Trinity, it begins very much in torchlight and expanded it into a theatrical lighting environment where there's scanning beams and the idea of torchlight became a whole new look for the Trinity capture moment. Usually when you design um, like arena or stadiums it's 180 and everything's on one end whereas here we can afford to do a 360 degree view so designing a box that flies up and down works for everyone. We really wanted to give the audience agency to move around and then we've split the audience into two so it's red or blue pill audience or zero one. We were always thinking leading from the hall into the warehouse and having that transition from being a rather regular arrayed audience and then of course you upend that at the interval and say right you're in this big white space now and you don't have a seat. What's very beautiful about Boy Blue's process is it's very educational, it's very much community sharing. Danny had that approach as well with Luke Call's digital students. So yeah, we've been working with the uh, School of Digital Arts from Manchester Met since the beginning of the summer, working with them on installation design and sculptural design. You have to sort of problem solve as a team, like how do you design for this kind of screen? Why close the doors of the theatre during the day? I decided to almost kind of hijack it to make a daytime installation artwork called An Atlas of Ez Devlin. And it's really a bringing together of meditations that I've made over the last seven years since I've been making my own works. You just come whenever you want. You can float around like a chapel in a way, like when you walk into a church in an afternoon and just listen to some singing. It's very beautiful choral music. I'd say the energy of this work is pretty much an antidote or a counter to the energy of Free Your Minds there's a very much more of a female energy about the work, I would say. <laughs>